Thank you, Sean. All right, first of all, obviously very close in Mississippi. Too early to call right now. But in the final days of this campaign, Thad Cochran, I would argue out of desperation, really angered a lot of conservatives by reaching out to Democratic voters to push him over the hump here. With the margin being so close, 4,000 votes uh, at this hour, that might have made the difference. Any impact in the general election? Well, you know, as for the primary, and perhaps if it's true, some shenanigans going on there, nothing should surprise you, but that's that old school politics where it's a bit of the status quo and that's got to go. It's very rare in a Republican primary that the candidate who promises to bring home the bacon, promising bigger government, which is requiring higher taxes and more burdensome government, actually pulls it off in the primary that's a rare thing so um, it's it, it'll be surprising and yet perhaps not to find out with that crossover of Democrat voters how that does impact the general how do you interpret what happened with Eric Cantor nobody seemed to see it coming and certainly nobody saw it in the margins that uh, that it ultimately came down and what is your interpretation of that I, I think that it it speaks for itself that it is the constitutionalists, those who understand that the Constitution is the blueprint towards a more perfect union, and if politicians would follow it, our country would be better off. And included in that, kind of that, that principle of following the, the Constitution is adopting the free market, adopting uh, any policy that would allow uh, thriving of the American people, the entrepreneurial spirit to once again grow. Cantor wasn't representing that. He was representing the machine, the establishment that had been there too long and was part then of that status quo prob problem. And refreshing to see new energy get in there and not necessarily new ideas, because these are time-tested truths that work for an economy and for security of a nation. And I think that, uh, you know, we saw results that reflect that. Governor, I've been making a distinction between conservative governors like, like Rick Perry, like Rick Scott, like uh, Bobby Jindal, Nikki Haley, John Kasich, Scott Walker, and the success that they have had using conservative principles and how they, in every case, have taken large deficits and turned them into surpluses, high unemployment, now lower unemployment by a pretty, by a pretty large degree. But I've not been inspired by Republicans in Washington. You went as far earlier this week and, and late last week to suggest that if the Republican Party doesn't get their act together, you would consider moving third party. Explain. Well, if Republicans are going to act like Democrats, then what's the use in getting all gung-ho about getting more Republicans in there? We need people who understand the beauty of, the value of, allowing the, th the free market to thrive. Otherwise, our country is going to be continue to be over-regulated, driving industry away, driving jobs away. We're going to be a bankrupt, fundamentally transformed country unless those who know what they're doing and aren't going along just to get along with those in power, it being today the Democrats, that does no good. So, yeah, if Republicans aren't going to stand strong on the planks in our platform, then it, it does no good to get all enthused about them anymore. I think there's got to be a vision. And I, you know what? I'm not a... I'm not looking for, for a complicated solution. Very simple. Don't spend more than you take in. Balance your budget. Energy is the answer. Look at North Dakota and look at Texas. That's an answer. In four years, we don't have a consensus plan on Obamacare. I think you've got to give parents choice in education and control the borders. I don't think that's that complicated, Governor. But you don't hear a concise message coming no, from them. Ronald if you elect Reagan us, we'll do this. Go ahead. <clears throat> Well, Ronald Reagan said there are no easy answers, but there are simple answers if we have the courage to do what is morally right. And we need candidates willing to serve those who are courageous enough to buck the status quo and do what is courageously right, and then to implement those pretty simple solutions that you just named, other, other solutions. How long did they go without even having a budget? No. You, you can't plan. You can't Governor, e I just efficiently wanted... invest and have priorities at work if you don't have a budget, and that's what we lived with. Governor, I just want the 50 million Americans in poverty to have the same shot in life that I had, and the, and the 50 million on food stamps. One last final question. <clears throat> Hillary Clinton's book, you were brought up, she told the story that, in fact, the Obama campaign asked them in 2008 to attack you. Now David Pluff is saying that Hillary Clinton's pretty much lying about being asked to make a sexist attack against you. What, what is your reaction to that? 
Well, I've heard David Pluff lie about other things, so I, uh, you don't know, I them. don't put a lot of stock in what he says. But no, the, the, the reference in that book, I think, was um, uh, more evidence of this war on women. Certainly, the first shot over the bow in my campaign. It was shot by Barack Obama and his ilk. No, they're the ones who want to um, essentially oppress women by keeping them dependent on big brother government to take care of all their needs. Part of the war on women, they started it. Yeah. All right. Good to see you. Thank you, uh, Governor Palin. And coming up on this busy news night, don't go anywhere. We're going to continue to bring you the latest election results right here on the Fox News Channel. Coming up next in studio, the one and only Dick Cheney.